Today I'm going to break down exactly how I edit greens in Adobe Lightroom Classic. If you're new here, my name is Hannah. I'm a travel and nature photographer. And if you've been here before, welcome back to another one of my videos. So greens, probably the hardest color to edit in Adobe Lightroom. And that's really for a few reasons. And one of those main reasons is green shows up as a spectrum in nature, right? So we've got those really yellow greens in hue all the way to those really blue greens in hue. So this spectrum can be really hard to work on, especially when you have other things competing as well. Some of those things could be your camera's color science or the time of day or how you exposed an image and even down to your camera's white balance. And I feel like I really mastered my greens once I mastered the art of white balance. And I now keep my white balance between 5300 Kelvin all the way to 5600 Kelvin when I'm outside. And sometimes, especially if I'm in a forest, I will even break that rule and go a little bit below 5300 Kelvin. And I just find that sometimes I'm able to manipulate my greens, especially a little bit more true to what I saw in nature when I'm in the post-production process, when my white balance is a bit on the cooler side. And I live in the Pacific Northwest, so editing greens, really even photographing greens, became this baptism by fire. I really had to figure out how I was going to, one, photograph them, and two, edit them in the post-production process to really effectively communicate the overall vision I had of a specific photo. And one thing before we get started, I will say that I do apply a preset first before making any adjustments in the color mixer. And that's for a few reasons, but mainly because once you apply a preset, it's going to negate any of those changes that you made beforehand. So if I edit my greens and get them in a really good place, then apply a preset, those edits to the greens are going to be overwritten by the preset itself. So just keep that in mind when you're editing. I typically choose one of my presets that works best and kind of achieves that look I'm going for. Then I'll go and make those finite adjustments to the color mixer. But for this photo, I'm not going to apply a preset. We are gonna edit the photo completely raw just so you can see the highest manipulation possible when we're talking green. So let's hop into Lightroom and I'm gonna show you the tools I use to really manipulate my greens to the highest of their potential. So in Lightroom, you can see I brought in this photo and I really brought it in because it is a great example of just how many different kinds of greens that you really can find out in nature. So here you've got those more yellow greens, but then over here to the right and kind of up here, you've got those more blue greens. So I just felt like it was a good example to show you that spectrum I mentioned a little bit ago. So let's just jump right into it. First things first, this profile option. Basically, this is going to tell you how Adobe Lightroom is going to interpret the data that your raw file is bringing into its platform, right? So once you start uploading your images to Adobe Lightroom, it should automatically update with your camera's profiles. I know I didn't do anything to add my camera's profiles in here, it just started automatically showing up in there. So typically I keep mine on this camera NT, but there are a bunch of different options within Adobe Lightroom that you can choose from and Adobe has their own options as well. Camera NT is basically camera neutral. So I just feel it most accurately represents the raw files that are coming out of my camera. And jumping down to white balance, you can see that I kept within that range of 5300 to 50 to 600 Kelvin sitting at around 5450 specifically for this photo. Again, like I said, depending on the scene or how you wanna use your white balance creatively, it really depends, but I decided to keep it between my typical range for shooting outside. And scrolling down here to the color mixer. If you want a full video breaking down the color mixer, you can tap this link here. So I usually keep my color mixer open to the all. It's just easy to scroll up and down when we're talking manipulation of these hues. And there are really two ways you can manipulate in the color mixer. And so the first way is by grabbing this little dropper tool, putting it on top of your photo and dragging it left to right to manipulate those colors. So you can see those colors start to change as I move those around and you can see the hue sliders are changing as I move my mouse around. And this tool works for 
saturation and luminance the exact same way. But my preferred way is using these sliders, so that is what I'm gonna walk through with you. So the two sliders I'm going to focus on are the yellow slider and the green slider. So you can see the spectrum of yellow goes all the way from green to orange, and then the green goes from that more cyan color all the way down to a more yellowy green color. And honestly, I find sometimes even the aqua slider can help manipulate greens as well. So I'll just show you kind of visually how this works. So sliding that hue all the way to the left, those greens are showing up a lot more yellow. And then if I slide that all the way to the right, that is a very drastic representation of what those greens will look like. And then on the yellow slider, slide it all the way to the left and it's bringing up a more orange red hue and you can really see that here in the trees. Exactly. And then sliding it all the way to the right, that is turning pretty much everything green. One of the things I love about the forest here is that all of the trees are typically covered in moss and that's really contributing to this overall greening of this photo on the yellow slider. So like I said, it really depends on the style or shade of green that you're going for. I like to skew mine more towards that evergreen color. So that's how I'm going to edit this photo specifically. And once I get those hues to a place I like, I'll scroll down to saturation. Saturation is how intense that color is. So I'm gonna bump it up a bit on the greens and as well as the yellows, I don't really want to lose too much of that dimension there that we have with the yellow shades of these greens, which you can see really visibly here. I might actually even bump that down a little bit more on the orangey side, just to create that dimension and sort of depth of field. I'll then scroll down after all of that to the luminance slider. So luminance is how bright or dark a color is showing up as. So you can see here, I'll slide it and those greens are getting a little bit brighter here down on the forest floor. And then if I slide my slider all the way to the right, it's really darkening up all of those greens. And the same thing goes for the yellow. If I slide that all the way to the right, it's less of an aggressive type of um, shift, but you can kind of see it here in the middle. And then if I go ahead and slide that all the way to the left, you start to see that brighten up a little bit. So I'm gonna bump that down, but I'm gonna keep the yellow a little bit on the brighter side. And then I might dip those greens just to be a little bit darker, creating that depth of field that I mentioned. Typically what I'll do is edit by hue, saturation, then luminance. After I've made those basic adjustments, I'll kind of go in and tune it all up and get it to a place where I really want it to be. So that's what I'm doing. And this is the before and after. So. This is the before, you can see those greens really kind of blending all in with one another. There's no real sort of depth. And specifically here, you kind of get lost with that separation between the sort of like canopy and then the florist floor. So with my edits, this is the after. And so I edited my greens to have a bit more diversity in hue. So up here, you've got those more yellow hues. And then down here, you've got the more blue hues. And this just creates a separation in the photo so it feels like as the viewer you are in this scene and kind of looking through the forest alongside me and creates this real depth of field that sometimes I feel like photos like this can kind of lack because you get all of one hue of green kind of meshing together so making sure you have a bit of diversification in your hues of greens really helps when we're talking depth of field so overall I like these basic edits here without any pre set on it and I feel like it achieved exactly what I was after. And honestly, you can see just a few edits go a long way. You don't need to edit greens or any other hue for that matter too intensely. Really small edits go a really long way. That's how I edit greens. And at the top of this video, I mentioned a few things to consider. So let's just recap them really quick. So you've got time of day that's going to affect how greens are showing up into your camera. And then you've got how it was exposed, right? So was it exposed on the higher end of things or was it exposed a bit darker? That's going to affect how your camera interprets green. Your camera's color science, basically how it's prioritizing the color green. And also you've got 
white balance, right? I said I keep my white balance between 5300 to 5600 Kelvin. Sometimes I'll stray on either end of those depending on the creative look that I'm going for. And if you copy and paste these exact edits onto one of your photos, chances of it looking exactly the same as mine are pretty slim. Same with presets. That's just how it goes with editing. But I hope this is kind of a jumping off point for you to really understand how to manipulate your greens and kind of just the circumstances that affect how it's interpreted into your camera in the first place. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.